In the previous videos of endocrinology, we discussed these videos. All have been linked in the description. The recent one was thyroid gland, which we are going to follow up with thyroid hormone synthesis in this video. We see in the thyroid hormone synthesis, the signaling molecule is TSH, that's thyroid stimulating hormone, which comes from anterior pituitary. And signaling receptor protein is TSHR, that's thyroid stimulating hormone receptor, which is present on the surface of follicular cell. So here in this process of synthesis, we are going to deal with follicular cell and the colloid. The signaling takes place in follicular cell. The iodine uptake is mediated by follicular cell via NIS protein. And we get the thyroglobulin synthesis in the follicular cell. And within the colloid, we get two processes, the organification of iodine and coupling of iodotyrosine. Now let's get to the process of thyroid hormone synthesis in detail. Here we have the follicular cell or thyrocyte. On the right we have the colloid and on the left we have the capillary that's the blood circulation. To begin the process we have the TSH receptor on follicular cell as shown in the diagram. And in the blood circulation we have the sodium ions and iodine ions in the form of iodide ions. Now under the regulatory mechanism when our body needs thyroid hormones, the hypothalamus releases TRH that's thyrotropin releasing hormone to target the anterior pituitary. And upon this targeting the anterior pituitary releases the TSH that's thyroid stimulating hormone. And here we can see we have the TSH in the blood. Then after that it comes in and binds the TSH receptor as shown in the animation and activates the receptor. So upon activation, we get the active adenyl cyclase and active PLC that's phospholipase C. The PLC mediates signaling via DAG molecule to PKC and we get the expression of TPO on the apical membrane of follicular cell. The TPO is the thyroid peroxidase. And later on in this video, we are going to see what's the function of this TPO. On the other hand, we have the active adenyl cyclase. It mediates the signaling that drives synthesis of thyroglobulin molecule from endoplasmic reticulum through Golgi and finally we get the thyroglobulin molecule in the colloid as shown in the animation. And we see upon TSH signaling, the DUOX2 is also synthesized and expressed in the apical surface of follicular cell, which generates and transports hydrogen peroxide from follicular cell into the colloid as shown in the diagram. Then furthermore, we see the adenyl cyclase mediated pathway also drives the upregulation of NIS protein, which is sodium iodine symporter protein. Now we can see we have the NIS on the basal surface of follicular cell. And when we look at the capillary that's within the blood, we have sodium ions and iodine ions. Iodine in the iodide form, remember it. So in this animation, we can see both ions, sodium as well as iodine ions, are transported into the follicular cell via NIS protein. Then this inorganic iodine is transported out of the follicular cell via pendrin protein into the colloid as shown in the diagram. So now we have three things in the colloid. Thyroglobulin molecule, inorganic iodine and hydrogen peroxide. Now first of all, organification step takes place. It is a reaction between iodide ion and thyroglobulin, which is mediated by hydrogen peroxide and thyroid peroxide. First of all, TPO acts upon iodide ion and oxidizes it, which converts it into iodine. And then this iodine reacts with tyrosyl residues of thyroglobulin molecule, and we get the thyroglobulin with MIT and DIT as shown in the diagram. This whole process is termed as organification of iodine molecules where actually the inorganic iodine is incorporated into the thyroglobulin after oxidation. After that, this TPO also drives the coupling reaction in colloid. Here we see one molecule of MIT with one molecule of DIT leads to production of triiodothyronine, that's T3. So MIT plus DIT gives us T3. While the coupling of two DIT molecules leads to production of thyroxine, that's T4 means DIT plus DIT gives us T4. So finally in this diagram we can see we have the iodinated thyroglobulin molecule which has got T3, T4, MIT and DIT bound. So furthermore this molecule is then stored within the colloid still as a part of Tg molecule. 
In the next step, thyroglobin colloid is taken up by the cell via pinocytosis, as shown in the diagram. Then this colloid fuses with lysosomes, thus generating as the phagolysosome. Then we see specific proteases hydrolyzes the thyroglobin molecule in the phagolysosome, thus releasing MIT, DIT, and T3, T4. The MIT and DIT are deiodinated by DHAL1. This DHAL recycles the iodine back. And finally, towards the basal membrane, T3, T4 are acted upon by proteases, and we get the pre T3 and T4 molecules, which are then released into the bloodstream via MCTA transporter protein, as shown in the animation. So, this is the whole mechanism of thyroid hormone synthesis within the follicular cell and collide. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.